tonight, we're, we're quite honored to have uh, two amazing ladies joining us that are going to uh, present for you. Um, first up tonight, my dear friend Judith Balian, who is the uh, owner of Excoveries. Um, Judith and I have worked for many, many years. Um, for example, the, uh, the Hypnos company here that um, April King and I started a few years ago. Uh, every, bit of, every bit of marketing that we did are all examples of Judith's work. From the very first logo, the business cards, our very first banners in our trade booths, our flyers, our cards, everything Judy helped put together. So with that kind of introduction and no more, I say please come on up Judy and ladies and gentlemen, welcome Judith Haley. Well, gosh, it's my, um, I think it's my fifth year being a member of SDIF, my fifth year in business, and my fifth year of uh, being in SDIF. I, I'm always so happy to be with all of you because it's so different than anything else I do all month, to be with all of you creative people and seeing things like we saw last week in the invention contest and, and hearing about new things like um, I was particularly interested tonight when Kat started talking about her gopher uh, mm -hmm. solution. So you, some of you know my husband Ed. A few years ago we had a gopher problem in our front yard and both of us being pretty creative and pretty um, humanitarian, we decided we would create our own gopher remedy. So Kat, what we did was we got a radio and tuned it to a hard rock station, <laughs> put an extension cord out in the front, and put the speaker down on the gopher hose. So of course this caused a lot of you know excitement in our neighborhood. They said, "What are you doing? What are you doing?" They said, "We well, can call the, the you know the exterminators. They'll come and they'll get these gophers out of the way." We said. We don't want to kill them. We just want them to go away. So. <laughs> to the neighbors. <laughs> to the neighbors, right? <laughs> okay. So um, I've been out of the corporate world since 2006, and I think that's when I got creative. <laughs> I <laughs> I also had the opportunity to do something really special from 2004 to 2006. I have a master's. Uh, psychology. I spent about 25 years in the corporate world in corporate sales and marketing, mainly high tech for ed the educational field. But I got a chance to take a program in expressive arts therapy with Natalie Rogers, Carl Rogers' daughter at Saybrook University out of San Francisco. And that really changed changed my way of thinking and, and changed my life. It was after that that I came up with the idea for the invention that I have. And um, by the way, Adrian was in on a phone call with uh, my patent agent, David Waller, and myself with, with our patent examiner uh, a couple of weeks ago. And it looks like it really does pay to get your patent examiner on the phone because it looks like finally after since 2007, I'm, we're going to get ours through too. So, so tonight, what I, yeah, yay. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I knew I was going to get the floor, so. <laughs> um, I'm going to pass, a, have uh, my, my dear friend Augie pass around a few things for, for you uh, that will tell a little bit about um, some of the things that I do. And I'm also going to be giving away some things tonight. So she'll be passing out a bag. So drop your card in if you'd like a chance to win a few things here. I have a couple of, have three kind of interesting things. And uh, if you don't want to end up on my creativity or my marketing mailing list, which I send it out about once a month, and it's really news you can use, just put an X through your name and I won't put you on my list. Okay? All right. So getting creative. Oh, great. Thank you. So where does creativity come from? Everywhere. Us? <laughs> the Akashic Records. That's right. Well, most, um, most authorities on creativity will say that it comes from somewhere outside ourselves. Superconscious, unconscious, uh, collective unconscious. Uh, Julia Cameron, 
the author of The Artist's Way, which is a, uh, the book on which uh, I actually facilitate a class. I've been doing this for five years, based on The Artist's Way. If you don't know this book, it's one of the best books on creativity ever written. It's helped oh, millions of people worldwide, been translated into many languages. But she says creativity comes from the great creator. And uh, so what, whatever, whatever way you define uh, that source, it comes through us more likely than coming from us. So in researching this topic, um, I <laughs> creativity, we're going to do that in 25 minutes, right? So how many hours have you guys got? So I, I looked up some of the definitions of creativity and some of the um, uh, requirements for creativity. And I came up with one that I really liked. And it's interesting because it's from Carl Rogers, the famous American psychologist, who's the father of my mentor, Natalie Rogers. And the three conditions that he talked about that are needed for creativity are, number one, openness to experience really being able to look out there, uh, not hold things in shades of, of gray and, uh, or black and white, but really being open to new experience. The second thing that he identified was an internal locus of evaluation. Do you know what he meant by that? He meant that the value of your product or your creation was going to ultimately be determined by you as you're creating it. So you're, as you create, you're looking for self-validation, not for someone else. And we all know that the, ma the market will val ultimately be the val validator of our products and services. But you need that internal locus of evaluation. And the third concept that he identified was the ability to toy with elements and concepts, to look at it this way, to look at it that way, to juxtapose it this way. So those were the three elements um, that he identified that were necessary for creativity. Are you familiar with left brain, right brain theory? Probably a lot of you are. So, Left brain, creativity really uh, requires both sides, the both sides of your brain be working. But the left brain is the intellectual side. It's the logical side. It sees details. It's verbal. It likes math and science. On the other hand, your right brain is very visual. It sees in images. That's why a lot of times creative people will um, try to have new experiences where they're flooding themselves with images so that they, they can get their right brain engaged. The left brain sees the details. The right brain sees the big picture. It's thoughtful. It likes connections. It likes to imagine. It's really where your creative child lives, is on, on, in your right brain. And in my classes, we do a lot to engage the right brain. Art, music, um, uh, role play. Engage the right brain, and you will promote creativity. So I'm going to give you some strategies tonight, and I'm going to talk to you about some of the blocks to creativity. This is going to be more, you know, a lot of times in uh, SDIF, we talk about the real practical aspects of creating and of inventing. I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about the psychological side tonight. So strategy number one is to use both your left brain and your right brain. And you can scour the internet. There'll be a lot of ideas on how to engage your, uh, the right side of your brain. You can eat, do things as simple as um, put your computer mouse in your other hand, brush your teeth with your non-dominant hand. You know why we get so many ideas in the shower or driving down the street? Those are actually right brain activities, whether you realize it or not. So hang up one of those whiteboards in your shower. Um, walk a labyrinth, do a puzzle. Almost any creative process will stimulate your right brain. So that's strategy number one. I work a lot with a lot of solo entrepreneurs, a lot of women 
a lot of women coming out of the corporate world or maybe they're starting a business for the first time and they have a lot of fear. I understand this because that's what happened to me when I came out of the corporate world. I was on top of the world, man. I was standing up there at that booth. I had my badge on that said I was vice president of this and I was representing this product and I got the big booth behind me. And then I got out after many, many layoffs. And you know what happened? That person disappeared. I thought, where did she go, this confident person? So I had to learn all of that myself. So everything in this presentation, I've gone through myself in the last six years. So there's Phil Fearful Freedom, my secret self, one of them. So what to do with fear? Don't stuff it. Why? What happens if you stuff fear? Hmm? Does it go away? What does it do? It gets bigger, right? The more you stuff it down, the more, the bigger it gets. So a better thing to do is to listen for its message. And it's probably ir an irrational fear. So when you listen for its message um, and recognize your triggers, then you can re reassure your scared little child that your big adult can handle it, right? And you can take appropriate action. So strategy number two is change the way you deal with fear. Recognize it and listen to it when it comes up. Anybody here not have any fear ever? Any fearless people in here? Good. Learn what works to calm yourself. Hint, it's probably not another glass of wine or another piece of chocolate. Put the fear into perspective and have your fear first aid kit ready. Think about 10 things that you can do that, that take the edge off your fear, whether it's go to the gym, uh, call a friend, whatever it is. Come up with 10 things. That's your fear first aid kit. And there's a great book, by the way, called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway by Susan Jeffers. That is an oldie but a goodie. I think that was written in the mid-1980s, but the message is still just as good. Okay. Anybody have an inner critic in here? Anybody familiar with an inner critic? Okay, whoops. Okay, this is a test. You don't have to raise your hands, but think about your inner critic. Which one of these is true for you? I seldom or never get critical of myself. I am sometimes critical of myself, but I recognize it and stop it right away. This is my inner critic, by the way. Her name is Carmen, and she looks like my mother, rest her soul. <laughs> See, I can hear my inner critic in the background most of the time. D, my inner critic is on steroids. You don't have to raise your hand. Okay, about that critical voice in your head. It's not what you think it is. Anybody know what the real purpose of the inner critic is? Survival. How so? Uh, it's uh, trying to keep the body uh, from death, germination. Okay, your, your inner critic is actually an iteration of your, your scared little child. Your inner critic is out to protect you. That's the secret that nobody recognizes. When you hear your inner critic, your inner critic is trying to throw up warning flags. It doesn't want you to take risks. It doesn't want you to look foolish. It doesn't want you to step, step outside your comfort zone. It's trying to take care of you and protect you. So strategy number three is reform your inner critic. Understand its real mission. When your inner critic gets loud, figure out what it's trying to protect you from and you can transform your relationship with it. A fabulous book that changed my whole idea about the inner critic, my inner critic, is called Embracing Your Inner Critic by Hal and Sidra Stone. Uh, I tell the people in my Artist Way class to pick that one up because it's just a real winner. Okay, Julia Cameron says, don't call, it procra don't call procrastination laziness, call it fear. Anybody procrastinate? Oh, someone has really <laughs> Am I in some buttons here tonight? <laughs> okay. I've got big time procrastinate, a big time procrastinate. That's Polly. 
She's my inner self. That's my procrastinator. You know, she's got a ball and chain on her uh, on her leg. So beware the saboteur and the procrastinator. They travel in pairs and they're often in disguise. This is Sabrina, my saboteur. Another one of my secret selves. I do a whole thing on secret selves in my Artist Way class. In fact, I'm doing a, a weekend intensive on my secret selves concept coming up. So, All right. So strategy number four is know your saboteurs. Know when you uh, tend to procrastinate and your, your personal sabotage patterns, when you tend to procrastinate. I know what I do, and I bet there are a lot of women here that can identify with this. I've got a big project that I'm feeling a little uncomfortable about. It's stretching me outside my comfort zone, and what do I do? Well, I really need to go to the grocery store. Yeah, that laundry needs to be done. Got a vacuum. Oh, gee, I haven't called, you know, my Aunt Madeline for a while. And I will find ways to procrastinate. And then what happens? The project gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So, so know your know your own patterns. Okay, this is Patrice, the perfectionist. You notice that she's cinched in real tight. She's got a screwed up face, and she's all like this. Anybody a perfectionist in here? Would you consider yourself a perfectionist? Okay, there you go. I'm hitting home here. Embrace the concept of good enough. It's probably never going to be perfect, right? If you wait for perfection, you're never going to get it done. I see this a lot with my marketing clients. They will take, I, I can tell uh, how much of a perfectionist they are and how insecure they are by how many times they make me rewrite that paragraph in their message, right? We're going to change two words back and forth three or four times. Is it going to make any difference in whether or not somebody buys from from them? No, but they, you know, it just has to be perfect. So don't wait for it to be perfect. Okay, strategy number six, reframe it with affirmations. Change the way you think about yourself and your ideas. You know, you kind of hold back, but then people need and want the product that you are inventing. You're the right person to invent it. If you weren't, you wouldn't have the idea. And you're doing the world a favor by creating it. So reframe it. Use affirmations. My product, uh, which I hope I can reveal to you soon, is about uh, has to do with affirmations and intentions. In fact, I have a little gift tonight that is another product of mine. So learn to use affirmations. Present tense, positive affirmations. Turn around those negative thoughts. Taking risks. Anybody a little risk averse here? I know that I know that I, I can be that way. Risks, it's a triple R rule. Risks reap rewards. Taking a risk is the one thing we can do that will most often move, move us forward. And that's where you get the confidence too, right? Take a little risk. Hmm, that feels pretty good. I'll take another little risk. Hmm, that's okay. Another little risk. And before you know it, you've really made progress. So my strategy number seven is commit to risk. Commit to risk. Take a small risk each day and a larger one each week. Schedule it. Put it on your calendar and do it. Strategy number eight. This is, I have journaled for 20, 25 years. Um, I probably ought to burn them all so that my daughter doesn't find them when I die. She says she's going to publish them. <laughs> but um, I think journaling is, and it is actually a, um, a main uh, tenant of the Artist Way program. Your journal is your 24 7 therapist. I like to say sometimes you need to dump before you can dream and discover, right? And if you get into the habit of journaling, it'll take you 21 days to really get in the habit of it, stream of consciousness, three pages, ideally every morning, not on the computer, by hand, I promise you, after a couple of months, you won't give it up. 
it's a fabulous, fabulous habit. Have you seen those Keep Calm uh, mugs and all the Keep Calm stuff? I love journaling so much. I created this little uh, Keep Calm and Journal Daily thing. Went to Cafe Press and created, oh, it was so fun. Have you ever done that on Cafe Press? You can create t-shirts and mugs and, and notebooks and aprons and bumper stickers. So now i got a whole Keep Calm and Journal Daily uh, wor uh, store on my website. Way fun. So strategy number nine, invest in yourself and your ideas. This is India the inventor. She's my little inventor girl, my little secret self. You're worth it. The more you uh, invest in yourself, the more the universe will come forward to meet you and your ideas, and you'll find yourself getting that uplift that we're all looking for. So, Augie, did you, um, did we get the business cards collected and did you, yeah, yeah, go and go ahead and pass it out. So, um, any questions before I tell you a little bit about? Oh, I want to first give you three. This is amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's a great presentation. Thank you. Questions? Let me get everybody's business card, too, so I can give away, uh. I'll t I should tell you before we. Encinitas. I'm in Encinitas. I'm actually going to be doing the Artist Way both in Encinitas and at the uh, Unity Center um, at Mayor Mesa uh, and the 15. Or I'm sorry, Miramar Road and the 15. Cat. Oh, it's on my website. Oh, I don't care if they sell the world of it. I, I think they give me a, a little royalty or something. I just had fun creating it. <laughs> it's quite a spreadsheet of, of articles with a logo on it. Yeah, so yeah, it's, 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 it was way fun. Anything cheap, you put your stuff on there, they reproduce it, and if they reproduce yours, you make a little bit of money on it. But the whole idea is it's a resource to take anything you come up with, make it, and sell it. Yeah. It's that simple. It's, it is way, you yeah. You start getting action on it, you take it and you make it for yourself and you market it yourself. It's a good way to test something, but it becomes public domain immediately. Yeah, I, and I didn't care. I did it in two hours, and I wanted a T-shirt for myself, and I wanted my uh, people in my classes to be able to buy one if they wanted one. So it's a cheap way. What's yeah. Cafe, Cafe Press. Press. Just look yeah. up Cafe Press. It'll find it right away. Yeah. So what I'm giving away tonight is... Affirmation Kit. It's a little 16-page booklet that teaches you about affirmations and intentions. And then you take this magic silver pen and you write your affirmations on the candle. So you've got a little reminder candle, a little altar candle that has your affirmations on it. So I'm giving away one of those. And because I love journaling so much, I'm giving away a journal. And I'm giving away, sorry he couldn't be here tonight, he's teaching. This is Ed, your former president's book, Buddha Plays 18 by my husband, Ed Ballion. So I'll be giving those away. So did we? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So if you'll pass, pass your cards to Augie, that would be great. Um, what do I do? I do marketing for inventors. I uh, facilitate the artist way and other creativity classes. I do empowerment support groups. That's what I do. What are you going to do the, um, your posture going to do? It's, it is. Uh, the artist way. Uh -huh. It starts September 11th, Tuesday. It's Tuesday afternoon or Tuesday evening or Wednesday evening in Mayor Mesa. Tuesday afternoon? Tuesday afternoon or Tuesday evening in Encinitas okay. or Wednesday night in Mayor Mesa. Mm -hmm. what, is the what is the Artist's Way? What is the Artist's Way? The Artist's Way is a book by Julia Cameron, who is a screenwriter. She was actually married to Martin Sor <coughs> Casey. She has done many, many different creative things. She used to write for Ma Miami Vice and she's written music, does done so much. 
And she was asked years ago to do workshops for blocked creatives. Uh, Hollywood screenwriters and people that couldn't get past their creative blocks. So she started doing these workshops and uh, she eventually knitted them into a book. And the book is all about how to get down um, uh, past your procrastination, uh, past your past, really change your attitude about creativity. And it has been, um, so the book came out and now it's people all over the world have support groups based on this book. I use this book as a background. I use expressive arts activities with this book. So it's a nine week process to help you overcome your uh, creative blocks. A uh, big heavy dose of journaling, uh, something called an artist state, which is getting out and around each week to new surroundings to get your right brain going, and uh, a few other things. I took the course 15 years ago, and since then I've written two books. So. <laughs> what an effect! Wow. A great effect, yes. Yeah, it's I've I've had about 200 people go through my class. You can go on my website and read what they say about it. Uh, Augie took my class last year. I took your class it was life changing. I can say Judith has an energy that just brings out your creativity and just changes things in your life. So, um, it's, and she introduced me to this group. Side bonus. <laughs> I'm not the magic. You're the magic. I'm the midwife. So, thank you. Any more questions? Okay, so let's. Well, folks. Oh, okay. A drawing. A drawing. Yeah. Here we go. So, okay, for the art of affirmation candle. Tracy Watson. Oh. All right, Tracy. Congratulations. <laughs> For Embrace the Possibility, Live Your Dream Journal. Oh, Coral, Coral Bergman. Oh. Yay. There you go. Oh, All ladies. First time makes a Wednesday. I was positive thinking, because that's the one I really wanted. Is it I, really? <laughs> I saw that, I just thought about it in my head. The power yeah. of positive yeah. thinking. Okay, Way so to go. Go. Way to go. <laughs> Dear Jean, please go ahead. Okay. Now, Ed's got this book on uh, Amazon, is that right? It's on Amazon, it's now in Barnes & Noble. Yeah. Laura, all Laura Manica? McKenna. 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 Are you Laura? Laura? Congratulations. Are you a golfer? No. <laughs> well, you'll well, find somebody who is. It's <laughs> an interesting perspective. Right. Thank you so much. Well, thank you.